Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we bid farewell to one of the internet's most iconic badass celebrities, Jack Carlson. That's Carlson with a K, whose arrest years ago was videotaped and has provided us with many a laugh throughout the years. Rest in peace, Mr. Jack. We hope you have many succulent meals in heaven or hell or wherever you end up. But we have ended up on Arabia, where Vivi, playing as the Huns in red, prepares to take on the Viper, playing as the Mayans in green. Now, while the players heard their hurtables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, not a bad opportunity for us to take a look at the Civ matchup that we are going to be watching today. Now, the Huns are a civilization designed to take the fight to its enemy with speed and mobility. Their Cav Archers get progressively cheaper starting in Castle Age, their Trebs fire more accurately at units, and their Stables work 20% faster, which is fantastic because you can actually upgrade your Stables as the Huns to train your unique unit, the Tarkin. This is a medium cavalry unit with a high Pierce Armor and attack bonus against buildings that makes it fantastic at late game rating. Now, to support its military, the Huns don't require any houses whatsoever. Take a look at the top of your screen where my mouse is. They start the game every game with 200 population space already available, which does free up a little bit of wood and villager construction time earlier on, but it does come at the expense of 100 starting wood. Now, pivoting, speaking of wood, to the north, the Mayans, a civilization that pushes its players towards ranged units. Their skirmishers can be upgraded to throw a second, albeit somewhat weaker, projectile. Their foot archers, except for the skirmishers I just mentioned, become progressively cheaper as the game goes on, which does help them mass their unique unit, the plumed archer. Poor boar being pulled, deer being pushed, llamas, sick as they are, just watching all the death and carnage around them. As I was about to say, that discount they get, 10, 20, 30% discounted archers, does help them mass their unique unit, the plumed archer. This is the fastest foot archer in the game, and one that comes with a small attack bonus against infantry, so perhaps uh, not one that we are going to see this game. And that to support your ranged units against the enemy, mine walls are 50% cheaper, so you can stay safe behind a lot of these. And Mayan Eagle Warriors can be upgraded to get a massive 40 extra HP. Now, to help produce as large an army as possible, mine resources do last 15% longer. And if you notice in the beginning of the game, the Viper researched Loom immediately. Why is that? Stubborn, stubborn deer. That's because the Mayans start with one extra villager, which means on a random map like this, they do start the game housed, but at the expense of 50 less food. So those are the two civilizations. One player starting with a little bit less food, one player starting with a little bit less wood. Not a bad time for us to look at the actual bases. Both players, 15 villagers a pop. Both players pushing those stubborn, stubborn Bambies to their inevitable delicious deaths. Let's take a look at the Mayan base primary gold. Uh, kind of, uh, actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the attack path. Because I'm looking on the minimap, and it looks like a pretty damn open attack path. Which is always, in my opinion, very good news for a cavalry civilization. Speaking of... Forest to the flanking left, forest to the flanking right, forest to the rear. So aside from an opening in the front here, this is a nice location of forests for our Hun. Primary stone, secondary gold, annoyingly located off campus, annoyingly on the wrong side of a hill as well. Primary gold, though, nice and secure to the back. Primary stone, also secure to the back. And then an extra patch of gold. So if the Viper wanted to put on some pressure, going into this little box right here, where you've got four out of Vivi's five main resources, may not bad may not be a bad place to attack. Speaking of the Viper, as we saw, primary gold off to the back and to the side. Primary stone also nice and secure to the back. Extra gold in the forward position has he not seen? He has not seen the two llamas that are here. And where is his other extra gold? Off to the right, extra stone off to the left. So the Mayans resources a little bit more dispersed, a little bit more scattered and distant from one another. Forests, I think in a better position in terms of forward wall off here for the Viper whose berries are very much in the forward position, annoyingly placed on a hill. Man, I don't like to see starting resources on a hill. Where are the berries for our hunt? They are to the rear. I feel like Vivi's moving his uh, llamas around a lot. Every time I zoom in on his base, every time I click into his base, the llama seems to be moving around. The Viper with one more villager is going up to the next age, about 25 seconds behind his opponent, so our hunt will hit feudal age first. And the Viper needs to uh, explore this with his eagle... Still is missing 200 uh, food, which again, for the Mayans that start with a food deficit, 
not a great thing to have happen to you. And I love this. Vivi, who spawned on this part of the map, is heading over here. Like most of us would assume your opponent is located here. Viper, who spawned on this side of the map, is heading in this direction, assuming that his opponent is going to spawn in this direction. But nah, welcome to the logic or illogic of Age of Empires, where you spawn at the, let's call it three o'clock position for lack of a better uh, numerical uh, categorization or assignment. And your opponent spawns at the six o'clock position because, you know, why the hell not? Which leaves about two thirds of the map completely empty. And now <laughs> Vivi does a fantastic four. Ooh, not a bad. Look at this. He actually did a fantastic four logo. Ah, <sighs> and he gets the llama llama ding dong. They become Hanuk snacks. And now he's also discovered where the Viper is located. Has the Viper even seen him? No. Where's the Viper scout? Ah. <gasps> Oh, literally, uh, what is that, 12, 15, 20 seconds too late to catch? Uh, and then he goes the wrong way as well. If he had just pivoted south, he would have seen, like we do with our radar system, that these delicious four-legged meals are slowly huffing their way over to the Hunnic base, which he now discovers. Okay, so both players know exactly where the other one is. 11 minutes into the game, will the Viper catch the Llama? He sees it being brought in. Oh, that's so sour for the Viper. As is four light cavalry units streaming across into an undefended berry line. I said that this was an ugly, ugly location for a berry line. And the Viper loses a villager already. Ugh. Yuckety yuck. Don't come back. Don't talk back. Don't come back. What the, what the hell's the, uh, the phrase of that song? Spearman also. I don't know that you can necessarily take four on one. And the Viper now loses two units. Honestly, I think he can probably take this fight against this Spearman as well. But eventually the Viper is going to just throw so many Spearmen at him that uh, his cavalry units will have like three HP each. For his part, the Viper keeping a bit of a distance here. Opting to maybe micro back home. Ooh, not quick enough with the wall off. Is he going to lose another villager? Vivi's committing to this. Vivi gets the kill. Two villager kills already for our Hun who is using the mobility of his army quite masterfully. Viper looks like he's trying to poke the berry pickers on the other side of the world, but not really getting them. And no, no, <laughs> not like this. Okay, we might have a 15 minute game on our hands. Third villager dies, but Viper finally does manage to get a kill of his own. And it is not the surviving villager. It is one of these units. Is it the uh, one of the spearmen? But look at this villager. Look at the HP. Vivi wants the kill here. He probably can get it if she if he puts his uh, units in the corner here between the Palisades. But what a save from the Viper. Now he's got to reallocate. Put her next to the town center so she can run in whenever she wants. And then put a healthier villager out on these berries. My goodness, there's more villagers here. Viper with the quick fingers does manage to... Ooh, does manage to relocate the scouts to the degree that he did. Although I'm surprised he ungarrisoned his town center when he did. They, there's a very weak scout here. Oh my goodness. Villagers moving forward. <laughs> no. Who wins this battle? I, I thought that villager was going to build a mining camp, but no, he had blood on his mind and he actually gets a scout kill. So all of a sudden the Viper does have three scout kills to his name. But unfortunately, he is down three villagers, the three that he killed. <gasps> Vivi noticed the weaker villager. He noticed, moved in before the Viper could even react. And now her friend, her sister, her cousin, her family member, whatever, is moving forward trying to shoo away this one scout. On the other side of the map, though, the Viper shows up with quite, an, ooh, quite a scary army until you kind of just move the camera north a little bit. And you see that Vivi here has an even bigger army. Although, what will prevail? Will it be the Spearman placement of the Mayan? Or will it be the Scout Micro of the Hun? For now, the Scout Micro of the Hun is uh, non-existent here. And the Viper gets the first villager kill of his career. And by career, I mean the last 16 minutes of this game. Okay. A few fired fu shots onto this one archery range as he heads out i'm surprised that vivi's army is this out of position right now 
Although, to be fair, not much the Viper can do in this case. He does have his wall off scene. Is this even walled in? I'm not too sure how the scout went from here to here. I wasn't really tracking it on the minimap. Either there's a gap in that wall off or he just went around the forest. A couple of more kills here for our Hun, who takes a solid 7-4 to four kill lead. Both players have killed three military, but Vivi's killed four villagers to one. And here comes that less than healthy scout. Army counts 18 to 18. The Viper's now down six villagers. Forging is being researched for both players. Fletching just completed for the Viper. So we are going to get to see some feudal age fun here. Not exactly a quick rush up to castle age with all that food invested in upgrades. And another wall off that, like an MC Escher drawing i have no clue if this is technically walled off or not it looks like the viper did drag a palisade wall across this entire thing and so i'm assuming it's walled off so just needs to wall off the northern portion here and he will be full on enclosed and by the way enclosed in a big way stone gold one two three locations for jacking lumber still has his uh berries up and pickable and now we have the exchange of fire that we all love in Feudal Age. The micro between the scouts and the spearmen. Okay, micro be damned. Vivi says, I'm just going to try to take this fight and brute force my way in. And that works out about as you would expect it to. With Vivi losing pretty much <laughs> its entire army here. I don't know if this is the OG scout, but if it is, he is the luckiest bastard that I've ever seen in Age of Empires. The eagle chases one of the unluckiest bastards I've ever seen. Poke. Did he actually poke the uh, scout? Let's see it. Catch up. And down goes the skirmisher. At the same time, there's yet another Hunnic skirmisher who bites the dust. And Vivi's army count just went from a massive 18 or so to literally zero. <laughs> Viper still at 18. Has to kill a Jaguar. It is what it is. Sorry. But Vivi is heading up to Castle Age roughly 20 again. 25 seconds or so ahead of his opponent. The Viper has racked up a good amount of TC idle time. About two villagers worth. And he is here. He is hungry to get villager kills. I'm assuming since he has the significant military kill count now, having absolutely destroyed Vivi's army there to the northwest of his own settlement. And Vivi continuing to pump out the food heavy scout units. I'm surprised that the Viper really went into a corner here. Do you, re do you even really need to go into a corner when you outnumber your opponent? Do I even really need to highlight this? 17 to 2 army count. Literally eight and a half times more army than your opponent. Gets another villager kill. We'll probably get another villager kill. And after that, another villager kill. Although, that being said, these villagers are getting a good amount of work done here. 17 army count is 14. They are not enough to one-shot these scouts, though. Where will VV pivot to? Because I feel like he doesn't have a lot of... Uh, Areas to Lumberjack, where are you going with your train of log carrying? Cool under pressure is our Hun does not move these villagers out of the way. Okay, so he's in castle. I'm assuming knights. Yeah, okay. Or a uh, knight, I guess. He does not have the food for another one. And now the Viper might be in a little bit of trouble here. But does he care to throw away these skirmishers? Will they get a villager kill is the real question. Yes, they do. But I suspect these remaining eight or so... Probably won't get any more villager kills. Back home, it looks like the Viper's adding a second town center. Looks like the TC here at home for our hunt has been garrisoned as well. So little by little, poke by poke, inch by inch, the entire army of the Viper dies. And now, oh my goodness, forget one town center. One, two, three extra town centers for the Mayans. What the hell are you going to do with four town centers for the Mayans? Last time we saw him go this many, he went full on elephants. Eventually. And now he's buying wood. Oh my god, is he going to put down another town center? <laughs> is he going to go up to five? 
No, he doesn't have the stone for it. Vivi says, enough's enough. We both have 31 kills. The Viper, for his part, not only equalized, but surpassed the Hun in terms of villager kills. He has one extra villager kill over his opponent. Secondary wall off being created. Pikemen are already out. Husbandry for our Hun means these units will be able to reposition themselves very, very quickly. And the Viper cools a cucumber. Getting heavy plow. Why the hell not? Economically, the Viper is ahead many upgrades. He's got bow saw, he's got heavy plow, and he's got wheelbarrow. Those are three upgrades that our hunt is missing, and he is now down four villagers, five villagers, probably soon six villagers. Ooh, maybe it's for eagle warriors with squires being researched here. Although for now, that squires upgrade will uh, pretty much just benefit the pikemen. And like I said, let's take a look at the Viper's internal guts here. So he's got his primary golden stone, which fantastic. This is, um, it's not every game, you know, where the location of resources is super duper relevant to the outcome of the game. It's always relevant, but in games like this, it becomes super relevant. And the Viper here, I love that he's double teaming each patch of resources, a mining camp and ATC, our Hun, is trying to convert a villager. Will he get? He, okay, he's retargeted. Now another villager. Now the, the Huns have, I think, one of the worst monk lines <laughs> in the entire game. They do not get redemption, so they cannot convert buildings. In fact, I think that's something these two civilizations share, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken the... Uh, the Mayans, the only Mesosiv that can never get Shalot Warriors, which is uh, unfortunate since uh, those units are ridiculously cool. But neither player here, so the Viper can't really, or uh, Vivi rather, can't really bust into this base by trying to convert houses. Is it me or did this house just all of a sudden go on fire? Or maybe I just missed it. I did complain a game or two ago about my old man vision. King of the hill castle here for our Mayan, right as a battering ram moves south, right as <gasps> brilliant micro out of the Viper. Absolutely epic here. That could have been disastrous if 11 knights with 1-1 one, one busted into his base, but I guess uh, we're, we're going to find out how disastrous it's going to be since he's carved himself a nice little opening here with a battering ram and light cab. Viper, for his part, has shown his castle, especially now that it's firing on top of these knights. <laughs> hey, guys, remember uh, remember 20 minutes ago when I said plumed archers are probably not going to make an appearance this game? Well, there they are. Two of them are being trained. Pikemen shoo away light cavalry to the right. Pikemen shooing away light cavalry in the center. Monks trying to get conversions on whatever the heck they can. Right now, they are healing. Another castle to the right here for our Mayan. Now, normally, when your opponent presses into you like this, I would I would normally say this is fantastic for Vivi. He's not getting any kind of counter harassment from his opponent. The Viper is just at home defending. And so Vivi's economy, his settlement is free to grow and expand and develop at will. The only problem is the Viper's on four frickin' town centers. He's ahead 26 villagers. That used to be a lot higher, but these knights are just running amok here. They are going ham on these villagers. 13, 14 kills so far. And as good as castles are, as good as town centers are, the knights with bloodlines do have the HP to soak up a good amount of arrow fire. These guys are uh, left behind. Hey, you know what you're going to do? You're going to take your sword and you're going to attack this brick structure, this stone structure with your sword, because... Because that's how real life works. Oh my goodness, we have yet another glitch. By the way, that is my favorite glitch. I like teleporting units. Don't get me wrong. But the glitch where the units try to run around, <laughs> run off the edge of the world. I absolutely love it. What is going on here? A couple of lazy villagers need to get back to work. Or else they're about to get uh, destroyed here. <gasps> ah, <laughs> the Viper. This is why we love the Viper. This is why we love 
watching the Viper games. Now, it, this little corral, this little zoo that he's created for these horsey units, not 100% perfect. He did lose a plumed archer or two, but what a fun little event here. Well, that's it. That's all she wrote for those knights. So I, I was right, and the Viper was right to be afraid of those knights. 21 villager kills from our Hun. That being said, the Viper is now still ahead. 19 villagers. That used to be in the 30s. Now it's 19. So Vivi is slowly, slowly getting his act together. Unfortunately, he is losing siege units now. And what is his army count? Okay, so he's going full on knights, which should absolutely rickety, rickety wreck this army. Beautiful splits. The Viper has ballistics. Oh, let's see how much. 648, 617, 609. The Mang the Manganel, the Scorpion. Just slowly, slowly picking away at the our HP of these units. Till the point that the knights can't actually engage. But where the hell are the knights going? Ooh, a little bit out of position there for Vivi. See, Vivi should have, instead of heading into the center of the knights, should have headed here and cut off all of the retreat. It looks like the Scorpion has fallen. Both of the Scorpions have fallen. Both players yet again at the 18 army count. Vipers ahead 22 villagers, though. A very middle-of-the-map castle, which Vivi doesn't realize he's blocking the construction of. We'll see how many villagers the Viper sends forward for now. These three now. What are they doing? Okay, so they're patrolling the gold. So Vivi has seen, by the way, let's take a look at Vivi's map vision. He's seen that the secondary gold is out in the front. He's seen that the tertiary gold is over here. He's seen that the primary gold... Oh, he hasn't seen how it's been mined out, though. He, he So he doesn't know how far away from being mined out it is. So he is actually quite wisely keeping tabs on these uh, gold piles... And where, oh, where are these guys running to with their plumed headdresses? Four kills for them at the moment. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming those two pikemen were a bit of a, either a mistake or a distraction from the Viper. As he does not want his opponent to have his eyes over here. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. Viper's villager lead is now in the 30s yet again. And army lead is also Vivi has to run away with his quarry miners. But to the north, this is the moment the pikemen decide to move out. Ooh, Viper's got to be careful. This might be a little bit of a one-way trip here. We'll keep an eye on the center engagement with the picture in picture, but for now... Oh, no! Where the hell did this eagle or this scout come from? <laughs> what? Where did you come from? Somehow this is uh, shaping up to be quite good here for the Viper. The plumes have two big selling points. It's their speed, their movement speed, and their HP. Not exactly a 30 or 35 HP unit. With 50 HP, I believe that jumps up to 65. Oh yeah, if we're going to hit Imperial and see Elites. That is a very thick, steroided up Archer unit. Foot Archer unit. Basically, Cavalry Archer level of HP without Bloodlines, if you think about it. But that attack is stalled. The Vipers managed to kill eight more villagers. Or uh, Sorry, my apologies. Five more villagers on top of the five he killed earlier on. But five villagers in exchange for all of those plumed archers? I don't know. Vivi's now down to a 25 villager deficit. Army counts yet again 18. I mean, is this uh, one of those, you know, how the Viper does... What are they called? Limited Viper or whatever it is with the name is where he can only go up to a certain APM actions per minute. Is this like a limited army Viper where they can the players can only build 18? He says as the Viper now goes up to 29 barracks being added. So we are going Eagles. I love that Vivi is still patrolling the gold with a very weak knight at this point. Honestly, as the Hun, do you just want to wall this in? I mean, how much stone would that cost? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty-five stone. And you wall that in and you can take your knight and use him again. 
Looks like the Viper's to the back. Looks like the Viper got a bunch of villager kills again. Three more. But the battle is raging in front of his base. He is still down 21 villager kills. He's now ahead 26 villagers. Army counts identical yet again. Imperial for our Mayan in seven seconds. Imperial for our Hun who is moving forward with a castle. More villager kills. Three more. Okay. The world's bravest knight here. Look at how weak the plumed archer actually is, but ultimately the numbers do prevail. And no, oh, <laughs> did Vivi really think he could take that? We'll keep an eye on what the hell is going on there, but pikemen are moving out. Ooh, cavaliers and elite skirmishers, halberdiers. Vivi's castle is up. What is he targeting with it? Looks like halberdiers. Good choice. Viper's taking neutral stone. Viper's getting... Oh, yeah. He's going to get absolutely wrecked here by these 2-2 two -two Cavaliers. To the front. Looks like he's killed a bunch of Cavaliers. Okay. Ooh, 40 seconds away from Elite... Pardon? <laughs> elite Plumed Archers? Okay. At the end of the day, look at the Villager kill count. For all that the Hun managed to break his way into here, the Viper from minute number whatever in certain minute here where he entered into Imperial Age, uh, Castle Age and plopped down three town centers, he has been preparing to lose villagers. Vivi has not. Vivi's gone standard three town center play, not walled in at all, which means against Archer units, they can just park their asses over here and over here, anywhere over here down south and again you are not dealing with very slow moving archer units these are the fastest foot archers in the game and now they are in imperial now they're going to have plus four attack they're going to be elite soon i mean he doesn't know that but we know that and your castle is being shelled by away shelled away at by a treb on the high ground and so it, this is exactly why i was wondering why did the viper go up to so many town centers he ends the game with 36 more villagers, maybe a little bit of overkill. Army count 32 to 11 at the end of the day, but he did take neutral gold. He did take neutral stone with one very protective plumed archer. But at the end of the day, wow, how the hell did the Viper manage to even up that villager kill count and not only even it up, but actually surpass it? Absolutely epic. Vivi does not have any more villagers here. He's got 13 of them inside this castle. They cannot pop out of the castle uh, lest they be immediately attacked by halberdiers and plumes moving back. And I think Vivi knows that, and he knows that because he can't really pop them out, he can't really repair the castle, which means the castle is going to fall, which means his forward position is gone. Not that it's much of a forward position here, just a few structures. But holy moly, the Viper Tenacious with the hold... Four town centers allow him to absolutely replenish his villager population endlessly. And Vivi, unfortunately, uh, with three town centers cannot. Let's see what the players were training right before the game ended. Three villagers, three cavaliers, five skirmishers, and two trebs. And those trebs are probably... Maybe one will come out. Maybe one. Because one treb here, on the even on the high ground, is going to take a while. Maybe two trebs even still are going to take a while. And it's at 94%. Okay, so maybe actually both trebs will pop out. But the question is, where are they going to pop out? that they're not going to come under immediate attack. They pop up to the north, the castle can fire on them. If they pop up to the south, these halberdiers can attack them. And now Vivi as well is going to have to deal with potentially... Does he see all the barracks? No, he doesn't. But he sees four, five barracks. And so he knows that eagles are an absolute uh, huge possibility here. What, what a... Uh... What a fun game out of both players. Vivi putting on so much good aggression. The Viper defending, losing a bunch of villagers. His lead went down into the teens, but now it's back up into the 30s. It's uh, grown up. 60 Cavaliers, 86 Halberdiers, Light Cabin Skirmishers. I mean, these were pretty much gone by the midway point of the game and replaced by pretty much only Knights. 75 Plume, 13 uh, Skirmishers. PKPM for Vivi, eh, beginning of the game, 13 minutes in, 22 minutes in for the Viper. 
the economies yeah about 20 or so uh, maybe even actually that's almost 10,000 that's almost 25 percent bigger economy for our mayan who's again resources do last 15 percent longer double the stone 2,000 more food Ooh, okay here it is <laughs> i was looking at this number my brain didn't make sense of why there's a 10,000 difference and then i saw this and yeah the the big difference here is in wood and gold it goes to our Hun, who uses it for all of his knights. Two conversions apiece, five raisings to zero for our Hun with that battering ram and the knights and so forth. But ultimately, even though he did manage to penetrate into the Viper's base, even though he did manage to kill a good number of villagers, ultimately our Hun just let the Mayan run around a little bit too much. And now out of the contested resources, gold and stone are firmly in control of the Viper's empire. He's so comfortable. Has he even seen the stone? <laughs> I'm assuming if he knew these three patches were literally right here, literally in the place he did not discover or explore, he probably would not have sent his villagers out here. Although, to be fair, this is the better move. If your opponent is letting you take the contested resources, the neutral resources on his side of the map, you need to shut your mouth, send your villagers, Say please and thank you and don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Because if these guys ever come under attack, you can always go back to your more secure stone. So always take the riskier of the resources. But ultimately, despite a good amount of damage and despite Vivi possibly staying in this game a little bit longer, he does have five stables up. I think at the end of the day, his base is just way too dispersed. It's way too easily attacked, especially these kind of exposed areas. This gold patch is running out. This gold patch is running out. This gold patch is running out. Has he seen? Uh, okay, so he hasn't even seen that he has gold here to the rear. And this is where exploration for both players comes in handy, right? And both players a little bit lacking when it comes to the exploration in this particular game. So focused were they on attacking and defending. But ultimately, after all the attacking, all the defense, the Viper puts up an absolute epic, epic clinic. And again, did he think? Did he know? Did he predict? That he was going to lose all those villagers and that's why he went up to four town centers and just kept pumping out villager after villager after villager because he hasn't taken his secondary gold he hasn't taken his tertiary gold he's only taken his uh what's the word again i'm looking for quaternary gold his fourth which is not even his this is more of a contested gold and i don't know if he's even seen now he has seen funny that he's seen the neutral resources on vv's side of the map but not the literal three patches right there that are on his side of the map but ultimately, all the king's men and all the king's knights couldn't put the Humpty Dumpty Hunnic attack together again. And ultimately, they all fall, even though, again, they were cavaliers. VV19 villagers on gold. Do we have any hope of paladins? Uh, probably not. If his economy was the size of the vipers, maybe I would have said, you know, let's stick around, try to get paladins. And then once you get paladins, there's pretty much nothing a plumed archer can do. It is, uh, even now, there's very little they can do. I'm curious, we'll have seen in picture in picture how easily they took down these thra three cavaliers. I suspect not very easily. But a paladin is a completely different story. And ultimately, even though he's got a forward castle, forward infrastructure, Vivi just, uh, he falls a little bit too far behind. He fails to deal with all of these plumed runbys. And by the way, the plumed is ridiculously cheap right now. 39 wood, 39 gold, if I'm not mistaken. So that is a very cheap unit. And so with that plumed archer, the Viper just manages to, again, not even up, but surpass the villager kill count of his opponent, which for the last, uh, out of 44 minutes, what, 40 of them were firmly in Vivi's favor? Absolutely epic hold, epic push out, epic sniping out of the Viper, epic aggression out of our Hun as well, who... Uh, Lost his entire army here, if you don't uh, recall the earlier stage of the game, just because there's been so much action, especially that little maneuver here, the Viper pulled, where he corralled and penned in a few of those knights together with some of his plumed archers in the forest here, literally between the forest and the space, the ether, the darkness. And it's with those fun, fantastic moves, and more importantly, with the hold against all of the knights of the Hun that the Viper takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.